In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up conversion events on Google Analytics 4 and how you can import those events to Google Ads so that you can properly optimize your conversion events around the most important actions on your website in the most simplest way possible. Right now, I'm talking about add to carts, initiate checkouts, purchases, all of the main things that you want to be optimizing around so that you can get the best possible results when running ads. Now, before we get to the video, if you're new around here, my name is Blake Bauer and I'm the co-founder at Jetstream Digital. And we are a growth partner that works with e-commerce and e-learning brands to help them grow and scale using paid ads, uh, funnels, VSLs, uh, and more. So if you want to learn more about that and apply to work with my team, you can find all the links below. Uh, to go ahead and check us out with that also make sure to go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the, any of the latest content in digital marketing and digital advertising and overall growing a business online and with that let's go ahead and jump into my computer and let me show you exactly how to set this up for yourself okay so now that we're in my computer here as you can see we're on google analytics 4. now if you haven't already set up your google analytics 4 property uh, i have another video on the topic so you can go ahead and actually set up your google analytics 4 accounts this is the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have this already created so that we can go ahead and connect this to Shopify or whatever platform that you have. This tutorial is specifically going to focus on Shopify. However, if you use an e-commerce platform or some other type of uh, online platform, there is a lot of integrations these days. Um, and so they're all pretty similar that allow you to really easily integrate Google Analytics for your business and your website. So once we're in Google Analytics here, uh, again, I already have it uh, connected or I did at least. Um, I disconnected it for the purposes of this video. So I'm gonna reconnect it and show you exactly how to do that. Um, and everything is gonna be simple, step-by-step, -step, A to Z. And this is just the most effective way to set up conversions without Google Tag Manager and without all of that um, other stuff that can honestly get really confusing. So let's come over to Shopify here. Now that we're in Shopify, first thing you need to do is have the Google sales channel enabled. Again, if you have another store, uh, in another e-commerce platform that you're using, not Shopify, there should be an app for Google or, or some type of sales channel that you can add to your store. And that is going to be the first place that you want to check that you can go ahead and integrate Google Analytics with that. So for Shopify, I already have Google Analytics, the sales channel connected here. If you didn't already have it connected, you can actually go to sales channel and just search for that here. Um, and so, you know, for example, you could search for Facebook right and it'll actually load this up here and you can actually add in the uh, facebook and instagram sales channel here um, or like i said you can add the google sales channel here which you can see right here free to install so that's what we already have installed there so once you have that installed um, what you're going to see in the overview section here is you have your settings you're going to want to make sure all of this is already set up and connected it'll do that once you already connect um, and set up the google sales channel and once you come back to overview here if you scroll down you can see google analytics 4 uh, is actually a free uh, way that you can go ahead and connect this to the actual sales channel itself. And this is exactly what you want to do. So click on get started here. And it's going to give you the option uh, to connect whatever email address you have connected to this account. It's going to give you the option to actually connect uh, the Google Analytics 4 property that you have connected to this email account as well. So if you're not seeing the correct Google Analytics 4 property, you don't have the correct Google account linked and uh, added to that Google Analytics 4 property. So just make sure that that is the correct email address that is linked to the Google Analytics 4 property that you want, and then you'll be able to select from the drop down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my Jetstream Digital account here that I wanna connect, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on connect, and boom, literally it's that simple. Now we have the Google Analytics 4 property connected, and that is gonna send all the data back from Shopify to Google Analytics and actually create the conversion events that you can go ahead and then import into Google Ads. So let's go in back into Google Analytics so you can see exactly what this looks like. So now that we're back in Google Analytics here, uh, you can see the conversion events are now coming through. Um, once you start to get some website traffic, you'll start to see this as well, uh, new users, et cetera. And what you're gonna wanna do is go over to admin and go to conversions. And then you're gonna see here, the purchase event is automatically gonna get imported and that's automatically gonna be enabled to mark as a conversion. So every purchase that you have, that'll be enabled as a conversion and you'll start to see that come here. However, there's some other conversion events that you want to track that aren't actually going to be already imported into here as conversion events. And those are things like add to carts, page views, initiate checkouts. And you want to make sure that you have those enabled as well so that you can track and optimize around that, you know, especially if you're running ads and you don't have enough conversion events for purchase, you know, to fully track that right out of the gate. So come over to events here and you're going to see it actually imports all of these different events from Shopify by default. And this is why this is by far the easiest and best way to import these conversion events without adding all this complex code and everything like that, right? So add to cart, we wanna mark that as a conversion. Begin checkout, we wanna mark that as a conversion as well. 
We want to also mark uh, first visit as a conversion, right? And then if you have like a form fill, you can mark that as a conversion. You can mark a page view as a, as a conversion event. And then, you know, even like a view item, like a view content, you can add that as well, right? A couple of the different things that you can add in here. So definitely mark all of those as conversion events. And then if you come back over into this conversion tab here, you can see all of these are now showing as conversion events. And these are all events that we can actually import into Google ads so that we can start to track and optimize around add to carts, begin checkouts, and of course, purchases. So now that we have enabled all of those, let's jump over into Google ads so that we can connect our Google analytics account and our Google ads account and go ahead and actually import these conversions so that we can optimize around them. All right, awesome. So now we're in my Google ads account here. And this account that I already set up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have Google ads already set up here. And the first step that we're gonna do is actually connect and link Google Analytics to your Google ad account. Now you can do this from Google ads. You can also do this from Google Analytics. So there's a couple different ways. In this video, uh, we're gonna show you how to do that from Google ads and I'll show you uh, as well in, in, a, in a minute here, how to link that as well from Google Analytics. So in Google ads here, what we're gonna do is click on tools and settings and then click on linked accounts. Awesome, now once that's loaded, you're gonna see there's a few different things that you can actually link to your Google ads account. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have all of these linked um, if you have them all set up, right? So your Google Merchant Center, make sure you wanna link that to get your products on the shopping uh, section. You're gonna to want to set up Google Analytics 4, which is what we're about to do. You can set up Google Universal Analytics or UA. Um, which is their old solution and their old tracking tool, which they are phasing out. You can also link Search Console. You can also link YouTube, right? So for Google Analytics 4, let's go ahead and click on details here. Let that load. Awesome. So once that's loaded, you're going to see a couple different options for accounts that you can link. I have my email connected to several different accounts. I'm going to select on the account that I actually want to integrate. So this Jetstream digital um, Google Analytics account here. I'm going to go ahead and click on link. And then I'm going to go yes and link that account. Awesome, now once that is linked, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Google Optimized Sharing. Go ahead and turn that on. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually just reload this page here and you're gonna to wanna to activate this so you can actually import those conversion events that we discussed there. Once that reloads, click on Activate and then app, uh, Active App and Web Metrics. Google Analytics 4 and Web Metrics give you more customer-centric measurement of how users interact with your ads. Go ahead and click on Activate and boom, now that is activated, it is linked and your app and web metrics are activated for your Google Analytics for property. Now, uh, that's how you go ahead and integrate Google Analytics for with Google Ads um, on the Google Ads side. You can also integrate it uh, from the Google Analytics side, but you still will need to enable this stuff. But what you can do is essentially just come over to here, right? And I'll just reload this quickly, okay? And then you can open up the admin right here and then you can scroll down, you can see product links and then you can link Google ads here and you can already see my Google ad account is already linked, but you can link this here as well if you wanted to link it from Google ads. And you can also link your search console and your merchant center here as well. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you link those things to Google Analytics as well to give Google Analytics as much data as possible, right? And just gives it more overall to optimize around and gives you more data to look at as well, which is never a bad thing. So let's go back into Google ads here and you can see, again, we have the app um, turned on and active. We have the Google optimized sharing turned on. Now, the last thing to do is add the conversion events for those events that we set up, right? Purchase, add to cart, initiate checkout are the main ones for Shopify in this particular case. And if you have an e-commerce business, they will be the main ones that you wanna make sure you set up as well. So go to tools and settings and go to measurement here and click on conversions. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna to get to a page that looks like this. If you have some conversion events already set up, they'll be showing here. If you haven't, it will say new conversion action. So go ahead and click on new conversion action here. And you have a couple of different options, right? If you have a website, this is like their old way of doing this um, where you can actually do it based on URLs. So I could go ahead and grab my URL here just to do a quick demo of this, right? Let's say I wanna use this, right? I can go ahead and add in my, my demo website here and I could actually set up some conversion events based on right this type of stuff like checkout right here. It's, it's saying, you know, hey, you should add this in, right? So maybe I'll add that. You can go ahead and add in, you know, let's say I wanna track uh, page views for you know everything that lands on the website, right? You could add that in. You could add in some different stuff based on the URLs. Again, this is not the way I'd recommend it. Use the integrations to your advantage because it tracks everything a lot more efficiently than just using URLs. But this is a good solution that you can also do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel that. Let me click on. So now that we're back here, let's start uh, to track conversions. Uh, another thing that you can do is set up apps. If so, if you have an app, you definitely wanna set that up and set up phone calls as well. If you have a phone call funnel, 
and you take phone calls, definitely wanna set this up for your business. That's a different layer of tracking that you're gonna to wanna to have. Now, what we're gonna do is actually go import, and we're gonna import data from Google Analytics to actually get all those conversions events. So click on this, and then click on Google Analytics for property. You do have some other ones here from UA, um, which is the old Google Analytics. You can import those events, but again, that's getting phased out. As you're gonna see here, it says web events on July 1st, 2023 are getting phased out, All right? So click on Google Analytics 4, and I th I can't remember, I, it's either the, WAP, the app or the web-based one um, will import the events. Um, I'm not really sure what this app Firebase one is. Um, they do have the web version. So I'm just gonna click on app slash Firebase. Um, and just see if the events are there. Doesn't look like they are. So let me go over to import again. And let's go to the web. So if you just link the accounts, it does take a little bit of time for those events to actually uh, propagate and start to show up, being able to actually import those events into Google Ads. So Google recommends you wait about 24 hours and you should start to see those events come through. So once those events come through, I'll go ahead and show you them actually uh, being enabled here to import and how you can set those up and start to track conversions and set them up properly for your business. And then I'll show you a live event or a live uh, case study of a business that actually has these events set up and showing and how we're using them to optimize the account. So uh, one sec and then I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that. Okay, so after just a little bit of time, about 10 minutes, uh, the conversion events are now actually showing up. So go ahead, go ahead and show you how to, you can import those conversion events. So again, go back to conversions in Google Ads, click on new conversion events, click on import, click on uh, Google Analytics for properties, and then go to the app Firebase, or sorry, it's actually, it's the web events. It's the web events. So click on Google Analytics 4, uh, go to web and then go continue. And then you can see all of these events are being imported now from Google Analytics, right? And so again, for our purposes here, what we're gonna do is go ahead and import add to cart, begin checkout, first visit, uh, form vis uh, submit, page view, purchase, view item. I think all of these are good to import. They don't actually have to be conversion events though that we optimize around. We can just leave them as uh, secondary events they're called so that we can just see them in the account and see the data behind them and what Google Ads is generating in terms of you know uh, view items and first visits, et cetera. Um, but it's not optimizing around these, right? And so let's go ahead and click import and continue. Okay, there we go. So you've imported seven web conversion actions from Google Analytics 4. Important next steps, if your services redirect all ad clicks, blah, 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 things to note. This action is included in the conversions column. To edit your settings, click done, and then go to the conversions actions table, right? So that is an important note, right? So let's go ahead and click on this. Uh, now you can see here, we have all our conversion events, right? So Google by default categorizes these. So we have purchase here and we have our purchase event. And you can see this is a primary action. Now what a primary action means is that these actions are used for optimizing your bid strategy. So when you select and create a Google ad campaign and you select your bid strategy is optimized for conversions or conversion value, right? It's gonna actually use this as a metric for which to base its bidding around, right? And so you wanna definitely bid around purchases as the main you know event but you know you also want to leverage add to carts and initiate checkouts to show some data there as well and get some initial traction to, so google is pointed in the right direction if you're not seeing a ton of purchase data coming through right now what we also have is we have uh we have page views event here we have first visit we have view item and then we have some other ones we have form submit and we have page view now these are all primary and what i would recommend is just turning off these other ones so that they're secondary Right, so let's go and open this. And how you would do that is actually just click on the event there and click on edit settings and then change this one to secondary. So what secondary means is this is not an account default goal. This action is marked as secondary and will not be used, right, will not be used for optimizations by default. It will only be shown in the reporting in the conversions column. So you can still see the data for these events, but Google is not going to optimize around them, right? Uh, now for these settings here for the value, I would just uh, select use the value of the Google Analytics 4 property, um, but you can also actually set this, enter default value. So if you value like a form submit, like a lead, you can actually add like, you know, $10 to this or something like that. And you could potentially use that as a bidding strategy as a conversion event. And then you could just play around with the conversion values on all the different events so that Google uh, ads essentially optimizes around maximizing conversion value over maximizing total volume of conversions. Those are two different bidding strategies that you can have. Right, it's getting a little bit technical, but hopefully I'm making some sense there. Uh, and I wouldn't touch any of this, just leave it on every conversion and then leave the click-through window on 90 days. Uh, and then you can kind of see and you can change that there. And then data-driven, I would just leave it on data-driven as well. And I clicked on done there. Uh, and I would just go through each of these events here and just turn those into secondary events. So let's go ahead and click on page view here. 
Again, the same thing. Let's go ahead and make this a secondary, right? And for page view, I'm actually going to make this inside the page view category. Let's go ahead and click on done and back. Uh, now we also have a uh, view item as a primary as well. So let's go ahead and make this a secondary. And I'm just going to kind of breeze through all of this, right? Again, this is what I would do and how I'd set up the account here. Uh, then we also have first visits. So again, this is another one that we want to track, but we don't want to be optimizing around. So let's just make this a secondary as well. Boom, secondary, save. Let's click on done and let's go back. Uh, now, what else we have? Uh, we have begin checkout. So this one I would just leave on as a primary actually. Add to cart, I would also leave on as a primary and purchase, I would leave on as a primary. Now, if you get enough data back on purchase events, I would just leave purchase as primary. So it's only optimizing around this and then just turn off add to cart initiate checkout once you're getting enough conversions coming through for that. And you can actually just go into here, again, change that to secondary. And then you can play around with these values a little bit more as well. Maybe you wanna make every initiate checkout to you worth only $10 and leave it as a primary so that Google Ads knows like, hey, this is still valuable, but it's not as valuable as uh, a purchase for example, right? Obviously not, right? And so this one you could do is, you know, this is worth, let's say $50 to you. So we could go ahead and add that in there and then uh, just go use the same value for each conversion. So let's go $50 there, right? And then you can actually go back and click done. And then maybe for add to cart, you know, it's also valuable, but maybe it's not quite as valuable. What we could do is just leave that as a primary and change this over to, you know, a set amount of $25 per conversion, right? Um, the other option is to actually just to use the value from Google Analytics. And if there is no value, then it would be $25. So you can also do that as an option there. And then for purchase, the beautiful thing about using this conversion analytics tracking here uh, and the importing is that it's actually going to, by default, import in the exact value that Google Analytics has for it, right? So if somebody buys something for $180, it's going to show as the conversion value as $180. And you can actually use it as a bidding strategy to optimize around conversion value over actually just maximizing the total number of conversions so that you get a higher uh, ROAS or return on ad spend overall. So again, just leave this as use the value from the Google Analytics Export property. For all of this stuff, I would just leave this as well. Every conversion, 90 days, data-driven, boom, all of that is done. So that is literally A to Z, how to set up and integrate Google Analytics, connect that to your store, your Shopify store specifically, and how you can go ahead and then set up all your conversion events and then import those conversion events into Google Ads to start optimizing your bidding strategy and track everything perfectly, right? And optimize your campaigns to the moon and get the best results possible. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully that step-by-step -step tutorial was very, very helpful for you and you had no issues. If you do have any issues, uh, feel free to leave a comment and uh, we can have a conversation going in there and I'll try my best to help you out. Otherwise, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other content to help you grow and scale with digital advertising and digital marketing overall. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.